Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought that it was a good day to sit down and talk about the six bags in my collection that I will probably never ever let go. These are the bags that I see 20, 30 years from now, hoping to still have them in my closet and I still use them because I just would never ever part with them. These are my babies. Some of these are quite new and others I've had for years now, but I do know that over the years my handbag collection has changed quite a lot. So if you have watched my channel for a while, you know, we're all about the handbags here, but I have added and let go so many bags in the past couple of years, just trying to figure out what works for me. I also really like to try new bags, that's the thing. And I'm not someone that believes that having a massive, massive collection would benefit me personally. Right now I can feel that if I look into my closet, I'm so happy and content with every single one of them, but I just don't want to keep adding more and more. So every time that I add a new bag, because of course I love handbags, I'm gonna still buy and try new things, but then I have to go and look into my collection and see what's going to leave so I can make space for this new bag. And these six bags are basically the untouchable. These are the ones that I never considered to be on that shopping list. Even if I was going to downsize, no matter what, I just don't see partying with them. Unless I really, really needed to, I really just don't plan to do it. Some of these picks are gonna be very obvious for people that know me well. I am very transparent with the things that I like and I repeat a lot, like I know that that's a problem that I have. If I like something, I'm gonna get it in different colors and I'm gonna use it a ton and I'm gonna talk about it a lot and I will recommend it to everyone. I'm sorry, I know that sometimes I get super repetitive when I really like a bag. But as I was planning another video that I've been thinking of filming in the next couple of weeks, I'm planning to downsize my collection. Not to the point that I'm ready to sell some of these bags, but I'm considering it to make space to try other things. So I'm gonna make the video, we're gonna talk about it. I probably won't part with most of them, but that feeling of me wanting to downsize is still there. So this video is like the complete opposite to that because I want to just keep these bags the love that they deserve because I love them so much and explain why. So it's six bags. There's no order in particular. Well, maybe there is, but I'm not gonna show them in any order. I think we all knew this was going to be part of the video and the years that I spent just dreaming and saving and hoping because I literally had no idea how it really worked. I just knew that I wanted it since years back. Now that I'm more like inside the world, I just still look back and think how damn lucky I was that this happened to me. This bag is my baby. Like, I love it so, so much. It's always one of my most used bags. Since the day that I put my hands on it, it was game over to pretty much every other bag that I owned because I consistently pick it over everything else. Like, I really, really love it. The size was perfect. I still can't believe that it's been four years since that day, but the thing is, I've always, always loved the Birkin. And I always, always knew that I was more of a Birkin than a Kelly girl. When I went to put myself on the wish List. around four years ago I was literally thinking that they were gonna write it down and throw the paper and like never look back on it and I actually put myself on the wish list for black and gold those were the two that I was like if I ever ever get my hands on a Birkin 25 like I would be beyond happy on my like my handbag loving craze this was it I know there's a lot of over hype around it but literally for me like the shape of the bag the way that it's made like so many things about it I just always loved and admired Admired, so the day that I was finally offered, I couldn't really believe it. So I put myself on the wish list, leave, and this was like October. During December, I get a message if I could go into the store. And the thing is that I would visit the store often to see toilets, wallets, shoes, and they would never message me. So I remember looking at my fiance, Tupolo, and say like, he sent me a message asking me to go to the store because he has something for me. I did not order anything at all. And Polo was like, no, no way. Because of course I've talked about all of this to him for the longest time. Like He knew that they were really hard to get. He's always been super supportive with the things that I like. So we went into the store together and they asked me to go to the back. And that's the point where I kind of realized that maybe it was happening. But at the same time, I was very much in denial because I didn't have a really long purchase history. Everything that I heard about the experience was mainly from YouTubers from the US and Australia, and I was living in Mexico, so it's completely different. And I just never thought to try because I thought that it was pointless. I had seen bags in that store in the past. All of them were like really bright pink or red. So he takes us a little bit to the back of the store. It was not a private room or VIP or anything. like the store 
store there is really really small and he just opens the box and my jaw is on the floor because I was literally not prepared either mentally and I also thought shoot I need to call the bank because I usually need to say in advance if I'm gonna make a big transaction because if not they just like automatically decline it like I don't know if that's a thing everywhere but it was with mine and at first I didn't think that he was actually offering it to me but more like showing it to me to see if it was something that I really really wanted to be put on the wish list like properly because I just didn't think that it could work that fast anyway he asked me if I want to hold it I play with the bag he then takes out another bag and it was a gold Birkin both of them 25 and I lost my mind and I could tell that my essay was having a really good time because literally I was like jumping up and down like I could not believe it I called Polo's mom so she could come to the store too and be like look this just happened I literally had to make a decision between two bags I literally could take this bag home with me like it felt very surreal especially when you have been thinking about it for a really long time but this one was like the size that I wanted the color that I wanted and I could take it with me so I paid and it felt like such a full circle moment because I had like a Birkin saving fund for a really really long time in case it happened but in my mind it would always be well traveled like if I was going to Paris I was going to try the lottery system or if I was going to London or other places just to try my luck never really thought that it was going to be like in my store because I don't know I just I didn't buy enough to really consider myself someone that could be offered a bag. Now I can see that we had a really good connection that essay and me. He left the store at some point I was left heartbroken and I don't even live in Mexico anymore. Now I live here in Spain, but yeah, like he was so kind and made the experience so good. He packaged the bag very Christmassy. He added an advent calendar, he added candy. And for the longest time I left the box untouched under the tree because I could not believe it and I felt so guilty for spending that much money. So I ended up selling so many bags to compensate for this. And I think that was the first time that I really thought about, okay, I can get my dream bags if I try, if I'm patient, but I have to let go of other bags that maybe don't fill my heart with joy as much as this anymore. So that's the moment where I started to do the one bag in, one bag or more out, depends on the price point of the bag. Needless to say, this bag has become my favorite, my baby. I always take it with me. I just use it so, so much and I don't see myself ever, ever selling it. This is going to be the first one. I have always had my three favorite brands when it comes to pretty much everything. Shoes, clothing bags. Chanel was my first love. It was the first brand that I was like, okay, I need to save for this. I really, really want this bag. Like as a teenager, I always looked on women who had classic flaps or certain Chanel bags and just love them so, so much. Like, I don't know where my handbag love and fixation started from, but it did take me quite a while from when I started wanting the bags to when I ended up getting them. And Chanel was the first and true love. Right now we're having a little bit of a break because I don't agree with the decisions and things that they're doing. So I'm just enjoying right now Hermes and Dior a little bit more. And I don't know if I'm gonna go back to Chanel, things would have to change. But listen, the shoes, I'll still buy the shoes. Just, it's the bags that I'm just having issues with especially new from store. But if anyone ever asked me, which is your dream Chanel bag? I always would say a black classic flap, but the one that got away was the Pearl Mini from the 19 spring summer. And I saw that bag. I was offered that bag at one point. I just didn't buy it and I would kick myself over and over again because I didn't took the chance to get it. And then prices went wild. I was never able to find it again until last year. This is my Chanel Pearl Mini. This bag for me is Chanel in a bag like if this doesn't describe Chanel I don't know what does it has pearls literally all over the bag and it's in champagne gold the bag is in satin this is leather I was able to get this bag last year thanks to Vertilux so as per usual a massive massive shout out they always make my handbag dreams come true I decided to finally finally go for it when I saw that they had it available and I wanted to get the Chanel bag of my dreams also kind of linking it to the wedding it's not like I'm gonna wear it with a wedding dress but it's more like over the weekend and the entire year like I always will remember this as the bag from my wedding year and honestly I still like when I see it on my shelf cannot believe that it's in my closet because you have no idea how hard it was to find and how many people that had it I was like oh my god they're so lucky that they were able to get their hands on it because Chanel releases pearl bags kind of often but not really and every time they're quite different and over every single pearl bag that they have ever released this was it for me so this was years and years and years of consistently saying like this was the bag that got away and then when I got 
got it, I was a little bit scared that I was going to put it a little bit in a pedestal and just not use it because it's a very delicate bag. It's a special bag. I love it so much, but surprisingly, I use it a ton, like really, really a ton. If I'm wearing a black outfit, I'll take it with me. If I'm traveling, if I know that I'm gonna have like a fancy dinner or just something cute during the night, I take it with me. Anything a bit formal, this is the bag that I go for. I just, I'm so pleased to see how well it entered into my life and how I don't really need to make an effort or be worried all the time about it because I just plainly enjoy using it so much. It was an amazing addition. Don't see myself ever letting it go because then it would be again the one that got away. And I try to be very careful to never have seller's remorse. It's a thing. Sometimes you sell something that you cannot get back or it's going to cost you more money to get it back. So I really think it through before I let something go. So this is the second bag that I don't ever plan to sell. And I do see this bag being something that in 20 years time I'm still going to love the same as I do today so after I was offered the black one he asked me if I wanted to be on the wish list and maybe try for this one because he saw how much I literally debated between both colors because both of them were like my holy grails dream color combo gold with gold and black with gold so I still thought okay it's gonna be a really long shot so let's say yes and around nine months later it was like nine months he again messaged me basically the same thing can you come to the store I have something for you and I hope this man knows how grateful I am because he was so kind to me and that's how this one happened overall my experiences at the store were just so so good this was the last bag that he sold me because he left the store and went to work somewhere else it was so so sad because overall every time that I would buy with him it was always so comfortable I was never felt like I had to be rushed he gave me the time to see anything that I wanted to see and to chat we would have conversations about colors and history about the brand and things that I just really enjoyed that sometimes I feel like I'm a little bit more shy when it comes to going into the stores and asking for things with him I didn't feel this way it was just like a really really good connection and now this too if I had to put these bags on a list of my collection they are absolutely the top two I would never ever sell them the fact that the Birkin 25 has so many aspects that I find to be so comfortable and so good for my lifestyle I used to be someone who thought that crossbody worked better for me but turns out I prefer top handle and I really like open totes and and now with the lifestyle that I have, with the things that I take in my bags with me, this is what I like to use the best. Like I adore these bags. I know that they are small bags, so I do consider the fact that maybe later on when I'm a mom or things change, I'm gonna need maybe bigger bags. Still then, I don't think that I would part with them because I'm really short, I am 5'1 and these are the ones that work the most like proportion wise with my body, fit exactly what I need, they're not heavy at all so I can carry them around all day long, they fit my camera, they fit water, like this style of bag doesn't really have to be endless, I just know that it's what worked for me. So I try to find things that are similar because I know that it's what I like. Now, this one was quite unexpected because I was always so scared of tweed bags. I just love it so much. I have a really strange reason of why I love it so much, but this is my 19 bag in tweed and it's basically this black and white tweed with gold hardware. Well, the 19 bag has actually mixed hardware and thankfully it's still doesn't have any stains or anything on it. When the 19 bag came out, I was actually not much of a fan. I just thought that it looked too sloppy. But then I started to see them in tweed and fall in love with the bag so, so much that now I just love the 19 bag so much because it's so comfortable and so slouchy. Like it has a lot to offer. The thing is that when I used to be like super in love, very healthy relationship with Chanel. I would watch all the runways. I would check all the upcoming collections before they were released. And I saw this bag, this specific tweed, and it kind of looks like cookies and cream. I don't know how many people agree with me on this one because I call it my cookies and cream bag. It's pretty much the prettiest tweed that I've ever, ever seen. And the moment that I had it like in my hands and saw it in person, I loved it so, so much. It makes me sad that sometimes it just doesn't go very well when it comes to spring and summer outfits. No regrets and everything single time that I take it out people compliment it a lot and I just enjoy using it it's the type of bag that you're just happy to use it because it's cute the size is perfect the tweet combination is perfect I just I don't see myself ever thinking okay maybe I can let it go. There's no way because I would always feel very heartbroken of letting it go because of how much I love to use it. It has an amazing back pocket and the inside is like a beautiful beige. The back fits so much. Kind of still has the stickers here. I need to take that off. I don't know how I didn't notice before, but 
Yeah, I guess we're taking stickers after, what, three, four years? It has a top handle. It's an amazing crossbody bag. It's so comfy. Like, usually during fall, it's my peak time when I like to wear this bag. I go out with pants, a very, very comfy sweater, and this bag, and you just look like comfortable, but kind of put together, if it makes sense. So yeah, this one, there's no way that it's going absolutely anywhere classic flaps have always been like my thing in my bag and like what started pretty much everything for me but when i sit down and see the colors that i have in the bags that i have i've been so intentional that it feels really really hard to ever sell either of them for me it was always this specific color with this specific hardware in this leather and i think i've been like so really intentional with the ones that i add to my closet but every time that i've thought maybe i need to let one go because you know prices have increased a lot maybe i can try another style it's always really hard but i'm not gonna include of course all of my classic flaps because i don't know i feel like many of them i could get back if i ever regretted it but the one that i know for sure that if i were to sell i would one regret it and two it would be almost impossible to find it again is this one this green there's something that i need to note i am very much a neutral lover i love to dress neutral most of my bags are neutral but when i like colors i am very very specific with the shade it takes me time to decide to really really go for a color bag instead of going for white beiges or something that it's easier to pair with clothing and when i found this one i don't see ever finding a green that is as pretty as this one like there's just no way. I love it way too much and it's in lambskin. It's like matcha color kind of with light gold hardware and it's such a happy bag. I think it'd be easier to part with others and with this one but I still like this was hard to pick. I love 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 my classic flaps. I'm not adding more of them because of the price point that they have right now. It would have to be such a very specific bag. Occasion and opportunity for me to consider adding something else. So yes this would be the pick for me. I've been always surprised how easy it is to pair with other outfits no matter if it's even winter so for me this is a keeper and something that it's going to be really really hard to find and the last one is going to be my mini kelly it was pretty obvious that it was going to be on the list i love 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 the mini kelly but the thing is if i were to describe myself or just say this is me on a bag I have two bags that I think that fit that criteria. One of them I think would be the newest bag that I got, which is my Birkin 25 in Jopousson. I don't know how to explain it, but I feel like that's me on a bag. But I haven't really had that bag for long enough to really say that it's a forever, forever piece. I think that it might be, if I'm really honest, like every time that I see it, I just, I love it so, so much. But that bag, I feel like that's me. I don't know why, I have no explanation for it. And the other bag that I think it's me on a bag, it's this one. Also not sure why, but every time that I see it, it just makes so much sense and I use it so, so much. This bag, I got it here in my boutique right after I moved, like around six months after and I love white bags. I always pair them with everything. I'm really risky. That is something that I need to try to be better because I'm constantly a bit worried that I'm gonna give them color transfer. But there's absolutely no way that I would ever sell this bag. Like, no way. I love it too much. It's in clay with palladium hardware. The size is amazing. I always walk around the city with this crust and fits what I need, even my vlogging camera. It makes me so happy to use. I feel like it was so worth it. Makes me so, so happy to use. It's very comfy. I have nothing but good things to say about this bag and I just there is absolutely no way that I would sell it and despite being my most used bag for quite a while now it's still in almost brand new condition being a white bag I would absolutely love to have one in black but in box leather honestly I think any mini Kelly would be a good fit for me if it's not like a neon color because this bag I use it so much and I find it so, so good. Yeah, those were my six bags. So this was the bag chat for today. I just want to say, I know that these are material items. I would be okay if I had to get rid of all of them. But of course, this channel is about that. Like it started because we all love handbags here. So I do consider this to be like the ones that I love and appreciate the most. And I would love to know for anyone else out there that loves handbags as much as I do, which one or which ones are the ones that you feel like this about? And of course, why? And that's going to be it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you're not to my channel, please consider subscribing and click the notification bell down below so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you're not done watching, I'm gonna leave you two videos right here in case you wanna check them out. Thank you and see you on the next one. Bye.